Hey, if you like The Thoughtful Gamer and want to support it, click on the Patreon link below. Hey everybody, it's Mark here with another three impressions, three questions. This is my first impressions format where I look at a game I just played and look at three first impressions I have of that game and three questions that I will be thinking about as I play the game further. Today we're looking at Small Railroad Empires, uh, which is a small train game, as they say. It's in a relatively small box, and it has a relatively small footprint, sort of. Um, I don't know much about the background with this game. Uh, I just know that I got it secondhand at a very good deal, and it seemed like it was getting decent reviews on Board Game Geek, so I figured I would give it a shot. I've played it once now, and here are my first impressions. Uh, the first one is that it is small in some ways, and in other ways it is very much not small. Uh, for instance, the icons are frequently tiny. So you've got little icons here, and these are different goods. These are probably the most important icons on in the whole game. And oftentimes you're going to be covering those up accidentally with your pieces. There's another example on these contract cards where if you look at this, that circle there has text on it, text that you're going to want to read. It's nearly impossible to read. It's so tiny. But at the same time, the footprint of the game on the table isn't that small. You still have your own little player mat and cards you're collecting in front of you. It's got, yeah, a relatively small player board, but there's stacks. Of, there's a whole display, a score, scoring table. When it's all laid out, it's not like it's going to fit on a really tiny table, which raises the question, why make it small in the first place when you can make everything 20% larger, I think, uh, and everything would be much more legible and easier to see. Um, I think perhaps people really like it when you put the word small on your box, and that's what they were thinking. My second impression is that it's an extremely soft train game. By that I mean that usually with train games, even the very simple ones like Ticket to Ride, have a lot of conflict between the players. And that's kind of part of the genre. Uh, even on basic route lane games, this is a pick up and deliver style game, so closer to Age of Steam. But even on just the, the route lane games, it's all about getting to spaces before your opponents do. In this one, you can have two players on any given tile, which means that, yeah, at four players, it might be a little bit meaner. It might have a little bit more blocking. I played at three players, and there was almost no blocking at all. In fact, everyone was kind of content doing their own thing the whole time, uh, which was interesting. It's a choice. I don't know how well it works. We'll get to that later. But you have to understand this is not a mean train game like many train games are. Um, so... Take with that what you will. My third impression is that there are a lot of ambiguities in the rule book. There's one in particular that it took me forever to find the answer to. And it's such a weird thing because it's part of the basic action of delivering a good. So, for instance, it talks about if you have a connected factory that contains goods in a connected city uh, that demands those goods, you can deliver a good from the factory to its connected city. And then under... Neath that, in a bullet point, it says, if there is more than one route available for your delivery, you must always choose the shortest one. That can be interpreted multiple ways. I actually have forgotten what the correct way is. Uh, so it could be when you are delivering, you must choose your shortest possible delivery between a factory and a city of all the ones available. It could be pick a factory that you are connected to, to a city, you must choose the shortest possible delivery from that factory, of the goods in that factory. Or it may be choose one particular good in a factory that you're connected to that you want to deliver 
you must choose the shortest possible route for that good. Three different ways to look at it. It took me a long time to f look up the answer. It is not clear by the rule book. That was the most egregious uh, vagueness I saw in the rules, but there are a couple other places where it could have been written better. I was just tweeting today that uh, I don't know if rule books are getting worse or if I'm getting more cranky. Uh, it might be that I'm just getting more cranky at rules ambiguities, uh, but it does have a little bit of that in a relatively short rule set. Let's move on to the questions. These are things that I will be thinking about as I play this game further. Uh, my first question is, can a soft train game work? I don't know if it can. And if it does work, it works as a kind of racing game, where instead of playing your opponents and working through the logistical possibilities of what you want to accomplish versus what you suspect your opponents are going to do, it's simply an efficiency race to do to score the maximum number of points you're going to score thereabouts in as few actions as possible. If it's that latter thing and there's no way to make it tighter and more constrained, then I don't know how well that works. I don't know how compelling that is. Uh, especially, it could be that style of a game could be compelling, I think, in a much more simple game. Uh, but this one, I don't know. My second question is, will different maps help? So, I got with this purchase, again, secondhand, uh, two of these scenario packs, and like uh, Power Grid or Ticket to Ride expansions, they just come with like four different maps. And I, I looked at them. They don't seem like they necessarily change the rules a lot uh, other than providing a different map layout. And they do have on the maps uh, that some of them are better for certain player counts. So I'm hoping that if I play again, I'll find a map where it's, it indicates based on the player count recommendation that it's going to be tighter and uh, have more blocking and that kind of thing to see what this game can do uh, when uh, you have a tighter map. We'll see if those help. My third and final question is, is there a reason to play this game in a crowded field? I love train games, and I have a variety of them that I play. I love 18xx games. I love cube rail games. I love Ticket to Ride. There are so many great train games, and they all all these different styles do things slightly differently. I don't know where Small Railroad Empires fits into that. I don't see where it carves out something new or unique or at least a new angle on the train game genre. It seems pretty down the middle doing things that other games do just without as much anger and shouting at each other, which for many people might be a good thing. I don't know if a soft train game can work. I think that's the ultimate question here with Small Railroad Empires, uh, but once I play it more, I will have a full review. Those are my three impressions, three questions for Small Railroad Empires. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, all that good stuff. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, slowly advancing towards that goal. Bye. Thank you.